الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والمثيل والضد والكفر والنظير وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله الصادق الوعد الأمين صلوات ربي عليه وعلى آله الطيبين وأصحابه الغر الميامين ما اتصلت عين بنظر ووعت أذن بخبر وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سيدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد عباد الله فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار والعياذ بالله من النار يقول الحق في محكم التنزيل حكاية لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن أصحاب الكهف بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف I commenced by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire households, his companions, may Allah bless them all and grant them all goodness. And may He bless every single one of us and grant us all goodness as well. My dear brothers and sisters, the Quran, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all know unquestionable, undeniable. We believe that it is the only book in existence that the accuracy is not disputed at all. And at the same time, we know that the verses of this Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not revealed that which is unnecessary, that which has no lesson in it, that which is, which is just a waste of time. May Allah forbid. So every single detail of the Quran is of relevance in our life in different ways. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed a story or a surah in the Quran, we should understand that one of, one of the most important issues concerning the story narrated and related in the Quran is the fact that we are to draw lessons from these stories. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah to Yusuf, after having made mention of the most beautiful of stories, and that's the, uh, the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, he says, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرَى Indeed, in their stories, meaning the stories of the previous messengers, of those of a long time ago, there are lessons for those with sound intellects. And Allah is making it clear. He says, these are not what? Just fabrications. These are not just tales. They are not things that are, that, that, that are narrated without a purpose. So, to name an entire chapter of the Quran, after a group of people or a story shows the relevance of that group or that story and this surah or this chapter is none other than surah al-kahf 
I'm sure that we all hear that it is important to read Surah al kaf on a Friday. We hear that, according to one of the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Surah al kaf is to be read on a Friday. It does not mean you should not read it on any other day, nor does it mean you should not read the rest of the, uh, of the Quran on a Friday. But it shows the significance and importance of what? Of Surah al kaf al kaf referring to the cave, Ahlul Kahf or Ashab al Kahf, referring to the people of the cave. So, what is this cave all about? This cave has a beautiful story behind it or about it. It is such a beautiful story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of it at the beginning of the surah. Just some few verses into the surah. Allah says, Am hasibta anna ashab al-kahfi wal-raqeem Kanu min ayatina ajaba Ith awal fityatu ila al-kahf Allah speaks about, uh, about the cave. He tells us the story of the people of the cave, those young men who sought refuge in the cave. So what were they seeking refuge from? It is reported in the books of Tafsir and history that there was a tyrant ruler and a lot of polytheism was taking place at that time. People believed and worshipped deities beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and had weird beliefs. And there was a group of young men who questioned all this. They began to ask themselves and they began to ask their community leaders what is it that you believe in what is it that you worship in how can you worship deities beside your own maker if indeed you are sensible people you would only worship the one who made you obviously that makes sense you would only worship the one who made you. And so they began to question, they began to ask, and they were being harassed, persecuted as a result. And so they started asking themselves, you know, let's pray up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and guidance. So they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them to guide them and to show them the way and to protect them from the evil of society and community. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recalls this dua in this beautiful surah. And they say, Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmah wa hayyilana min amrina rashada Oh, our Rabb, Grant us from you mercy, have mercy on us, and make easy for us our affairs, the affairs of righteousness and goodness, that which is what? Correct and upright. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in that cave that the group of young men decided to get together, Allah caused them to fall asleep. Now, if you and I are really tired, how many hours would we sleep for? Some would say six, some would say eight, some might even say 12. But the point is, after sleeping for 12 hours, can you sleep any longer? You'd need pills, and you need perhaps artificial methods of making you prolong your sleep. But these young men, they were asleep in such a way that Allah recalls this in the Quran. They were asleep for more than 300 years. 300 years. Not three days, not three months, no. Not 30 years. 300 years. There was a tyrant ruler, and when they had got into the cave at that particular time, and when they got up, we'll find out in some few minutes what actually conspired, inshallah. But 
whilst they were asleep, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved them, protected them in a unique way. The sunrise and the sun, uh, sunset was such that it did not pierce, or the rays of the sun did not fall upon them to affect their skin or their bodies. In any way, it rose in the right and, uh, and set in the, uh, in the left. And at the same time, they moved in their sleep. And some narrations made mention of the fact that their eyes were wide open and they moved, tossed and turned. Because if uh, you don't move for 300 years, what will happen? Their body might perhaps be affected by bugs or insects and so on. Their body will be affected definitely. So they move. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if anyone had seen them in that condition, they would have what? Run away. Imagine seeing someone sleeping, the eyes, uh, the eyes are wide open, and they are moving at the same time. What would happen? Allah says, Had you seen them, had you looked at them, you would have run away. So now, Let's pause here to, I mean, draw a lesson or two. Firstly, the concern of this youth. What is their concern? They do ask questions. When the sentences are going, we what? They ask questions. Now, how many of us do ask questions? This is a very, very important point. For instance, you see something online. Which, which sounds very enticing, very interesting, very attractive. But you need to what? ask questions so that you be protected. Protected from what? From false information, misinformation, or sometimes a deviant path that might be seemingly attractive. There are, or there is a lot of intolerance, uh, intolerance being promoted online. For example, a lot of extremism being promoted in the internet, but you need to ask questions. You need to ask the, uh, the real people that you know with knowledge, the senior scholars, so that you wouldn't fall into the traps of the devil. So these young men, they ask questions. And they were not satisfied until they received the correct answers. And when they did not receive the correct answers, they decided to go into the mode where they began to meditate, to ponder over solutions. Just like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa at a certain stage in his life, when he was about 40 years old, he used to frequent the cave of Hira. What did he used to do there? He used to ponder, he used to meditate, reflect over the evil conditions of the people of Quraysh at that time, and solutions. And this is when the revelation starts coming to him. But as for the group of people, or these young men, they were a group of people, and they are like-minded people. According to one of the narrations, uh, it made mention of the fact that they did not know each other. According to one of the narrations of Ibn Kathiri, he, he says they did not know each other. And they arrived at the same cave and they met each other there. They had the same purpose. They are concerned about the same situation. Which means, if all these were separated people who are equally concerned about the same situation, and each one of them thought, you know, the safest place for me to be is to go into seclusion. Let me go to a specific place. The one goes and see the others, uh, and, and you see the other, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh, there is uh, a discrepancy as to the exact number. We'll get to that, inshallah. But at the end of the day, whether they knew each other or not is besides the point. The most important thing is they got to meet. 
And I want to draw a very important point here, especially to we the youth. The friends you make, your company, will either what make you or break you. The company you keep is very, very important. The friends you have should be those who are like-minded, those who are equally concerned about serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are equally concerned about being upright, who are equally concerned about serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the service of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean? Yes, I'm serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving a charity. I'm serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being courteous. And yes, I'm serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. What does that mean? I will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and at the same time follow the footsteps footsteps of those sent to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show me what I should be doing and what I should not be doing. So the company we keep is very, very important. There are a lot, a lot of uh, youngsters who are led astray, uh, astray by those who are their friends. And there are so many examples of those who have learned something good, those who are encouraged to visit the masjid, to fulfill salah, to dress appropriately, and to perform other obligations or to abstain from prohibitions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So the company you keep is very, very important. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa ja'alni wa iyaakum mimman yastami'oon al-qawla fa yattabi'oon ahsana wa kulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina min kulli dhamb wa astaghfiruhu wa yaghfir lakum innahu kana ghaffara الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشانه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأزواجه وأصحابه وخلانه ومن سار على نهجه واقتفى أثاره واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam and this beautiful story continues these people had taken with them their dog. One might ask, why did they take their dog with them? The truth is, I don't know. But I do know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised very, very important issues in this same surah. And one of them is the debates concerning or surrounding the people of the cave. Do you know that later on, of course, when you go back to the reasons of revelation of this surah, the Jewish people in Medina al Manawara had asked the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, some few questions. And one of them is we want to know about the people who had gone away for a very long time. If you are really a prophet, tell us. If you really get revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrated the story to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but then came the debates what was the debates the debate has been there from the time the story was initially revealed in the Old Testament when the Jews had asked a question about the color of the dog of the people of the cave. What of the color? Some said it was light in color. Some said it was dark and a huge dispute occurred. Arguments. Debating. Debating about what? <coughs> Debating about the color of the dog. Like it was going to change the story. And the bit that has been mentioned in the Quran is how many were these youngsters? Some said, oh, there are three, and the fourth was the dog. Some said, oh no, there are five, and the sixth was the dog. Some said, there are seven, and the eighth was the dog. 
Allah doesn't tell us the answer. Why? It's irrelevant. So what if even there are eight of them, or there were eight of them? So what if the dog is, uh, or was even, uh, let's say, purple in color? What is of essence is what? The lesson. And another bit made mention is that were these people or these youngsters before or after Isa alayhi salam? Whether they were before or after, it doesn't cut any eyes, so to speak. In another bit, where are these youngsters? That is why a lot of countries boast this Livest Cave. You go to Turkey, they show it to you, they have it. You go to Sham, they will show it to you. You go to, you go to Urdun, Jordan, they show it to you. Where exactly were they? That's the point being raised. No matter where they were or where they are, is the lesson. And I want to raise a very, very important issue here. That is, we as Muslims, we sometimes debate about unnecessary matters, things that are irrelevant. And we kind of lose focus upon the main goal. And we don't imagine that we are in actual fact, causing harm to the Ummah. You know, I stand like this in prayers, or I make my finger like this during the tahiyyah, or I keep it uh, straight, you know, someone somewhere. This guy belongs to a deviant path or a deviant sect. Forgetting that we have different or several schools of thoughts, and they are all from the main, uh, mainstream sunnah. Argument about the finger. We have major matters that we should concentrate on. Today I come and say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. What did I just say? I testify that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. So the primary question is, do I worship Allah alone? That is the question that we should ask, and that is the answer that we should give. Do I worship Allah alone? Do I follow the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? I said it. I declared that I will worship Allah subhanahu wa taala alone, and that is how I can enter the fold of Islam. And if I worship, or I should associate partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I exit the fold of Islam. We follow. These are the issues that because we should concentrate on, not to argue over petties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this man to us, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very unique gifts, conforming to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, teaching us how to adapt the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imagine if an angel was sent to us to teach, uh, to teach us how to pray, or how to sleep, or how to eat, or how to bath. Well, we would just find an excuse and say, you know, he's an angel, so we can't uh, fulfill the salah. But it's a human sent to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to emulate, to copy. But till today, there are people who give excuse that. You know, he is a prophet. I'm not a prophet, so I can't pray. I can't follow this prophet. When Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did something, it became an act of worship. So you would have to copy. No one is going to tell you copyright. It is a. You would have to copy it. In fact, that's the only way out. These are the matters that we have to watch. We have to concentrate on. And I learned from this beautiful surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, oh, they will ask a question. What is the question? 
سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم دول وقت دول أسبستن دول سي او دي ار ثري and the fourth was the dog some will say oh no 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 there are five and the sixth was the dog some would even say no there are seven and the eighth was the dog how many were they <laughs> say allah know what knows the exact figure for you and i it's irrelevant because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept it unseen and i learned from this point that matters of the unseen we cannot accept them from anyone and everyone. We accept them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We start where Allah starts and stop where Allah stops without wanting to know more. People want to know final details. Okay, like I said, was the dog sitting with the legs stretched toward the front or back? The question. Even if we knew the answer, how does that change the story? These are details that are absolutely irrelevant. We have major issues that we should concentrate on. But to debate about the finger or standing, we have lost track of the fact that we might not be even worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly or following the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at all. These are the concerns that we have. The point is already made. We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We have to concentrate on major issues, issues of learning. We treat each other in a manner that is not befitting the Muslim Ummah. We doubt each other. We backbite, we gossip, we slander, we hate. We jealous of. We create problems. We should be resolving crisis. We should be creating ease in the lives of others. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us through this beautiful, uh, beautiful story. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when these youngsters woke from their sleep, they got confused. They started, they started asking it, uh, themselves. They started asking themselves, how long had we stayed here? <coughs> and the one replying said, I think half of a day. Obviously, if you uh, set off to bed and you wake up, you know that it can't be more than a day, right? But it took them a very short moment to realize that, you know, there is something amiss. Something had happened because of their clothes. So they realized that something had happened. They knew there was a tyrant ruler when they got into the cave or in this cave that they sought refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now they are awake. They require a little bit of food. So they sent the one with some currencies that they have. They told him, go into the city, come back with something good, come back with something halal, but make sure you are not being recognized. If not, or if not, they might engage in their persecutions once again. They might harm you, so be careful. But when, when he went into the, uh, the city, he was what? He was recognized. Because, because of his clothing. Of course, if someone comes to us now, now uh, right now, with clothing that have been worn 30 years back, we recognize him, of course, 
you know, he's from uh, the olden days. And we used to tell our dads, right, that these shoes that you bought for me from the market is from the sisters. And they also replied to us that what, we are not even, or we are not even in the sisters to know what it was about. SubhanAllah. <laughs> so he was recognized. If you are to go back to the early 90s, those who lived in the 90s know, uh, you'd find the Victorian era with the dress code, if they are dressed like that, they would all look like Muslims, mashallah. 300 years, and we increased it by nine. And I read something very interesting. Uh, when the story was uh, revealed in the Old Testament, 300 years was mentioned. This is actually for the students. Uh, I don't know whether it's relevant or not. It's just, I mean, something very interesting. So if you are a student, just take notes. 300 years was mentioned in the Old Testament. But in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said 300 years and we increased it by nine. So if you are to convert the solar calendar, or let me say today's Gregorian calendar, to the lunar calendar, you'd get exactly 309. For every 35 years, you add a year. Whether it's interesting or not, uh, whether it's relevant or not, uh, it's besides the point. It's just something very interesting. So, 300 years and we increased by nine. The nine converts the solar calendar to the lunar calendar. And the currency that was brought out to pay for the food was very old. So, they were recognized. When they were recognized, they were being what? Brought forth. But at that time, they were surprised to see that the ruler had changed, people were good, situations and conditions had changed, people were worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they came back and lived in the society. These are people who were literally given life to death 300, 300 years. It's not easy. and they live in the community as a miracle. So, this is what, this is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It shows the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How miracle, miraculous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, I have just made mention of a portion of this uh, beautiful surah but because of time factor when the opportunity is being given, uh, given to us again we shall conclude inshallah but before i exit i hope that we've seen that most of the debates surrounding the people of the cave are actually irrelevant and the answers are not given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The things we read concerning these final details, most of them are questionable. And the point being raised is that you should not waste your time arguing over petties. We have major issues. People are dying every day across the globe. But we are, we are here arguing about the finger or someone standing in prayers. Very quick one before I exit the member. This surah has other lessons in it. It is not just the story of the people of the cave. But this story of the people of the cave was what was the first to be mentioned. And right after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very, very important one, made mention of the people of the garden or the man of the garden, the man who was bestowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with so much and he related it to himself. This is what? The test of wealth. The test of wealth. What do we learn from, he, uh, from this point? He related to himself. And he was what? He was corrected by his friend. He said, hey, see, whenever you have been given something by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, relate it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because the one who raised you can trap you anytime. Test of wealth. So my dear brothers and sisters, 
no matter what we have, money, intellect, position, power, is from no one but what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understand how insignificant woman is in comparison with Allah or in comparison to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we live, we live with absolutely nothing. We are absolutely insignificant. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 